Well, hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, here we are once again. Uh, this video is going to be part three of our UH-1D Huey gunship by Ravel. And in this video, we're going to be doing the painting of our interior. And as you can see here, this is where we left our interior in our last video. So, of course, the very first thing we're going to have to do is get everything ready. And so everything that's not glued down, we're going to take and pull out of the interior. Uh, that includes these seats. We're going to be very careful with those. We don't want to break loose any of our CA glue. Uh, that would not be advantageous at this point. And this is where planning ahead and not gluing things in <laughs> really comes in handy. Especially since we're going to be uh, uh, using several different colors here. So I kind of designed these troop seats to, to be removable, but we got to be very careful. Uh, like I said before, we don't, we don't want to break anything. We'll have to fix that later if we do. Now, since we used a lot of metal here, we're going to have to use this uh, Mr. Metal Primer uh, to prime these metal parts. That'll give us the best possibility <laughs> of uh, getting our paint to stick to this uh, aluminum which we use for the canvas portion of the seats and also the brass rod which we used for the structure uh, in our seats and this primer lays down uh, once it dries it's an extremely thin film uh, you're not going to see it or notice it uh, we just need to make sure that we get everything covered with it and with those metal parts primed, uh, we can go ahead and prepare everything for uh, spraying these. We're going to airbrush all these parts. I like to use these alligator clips uh, <laughs> anywhere I can. It makes it really easy uh, to paint the parts. But there are some instances where um, you can't use a, uh, an alligator clip. Um, in that case, I like to use this double stick tape and just using uh, a craft stick here. Uh, for some of us hillbillies, we call them popsicle sticks. And the film can be kind of tricky to get off sometimes. Uh, I just use my exacto uh, blade to get a leg up on that. Another way that uh, I use to hold small parts uh, is to use painter's tape. Now here I'm just going to use the regular blue painter's tape. And I'm just going to make me a sticky loop here uh, on a thin piece of cardboard and I'm doing this so that the sticky side is out and I'll just press down and crease the ends of it here and then we can just stick our parts on it now I will make a second one of these uh, so that once I've got a coat of paint and and since we're going to be using acrylics they're going to dry pretty quick I can uh, flip these over on a new piece of tape and we'll get the other side of these painted you can see there it holds pretty good so the first thing we're going to do is prime everything in Vallejo Black. And of course this is mixed with airbrush thinner. I'm using the Vallejo thinner. Now I'm not going to video me painting <laughs> every single thing. Uh, but what I will say is that whenever you're airbrushing acrylics, the best thing to do is to get you a light coat down that covers everything nicely first. And kind of let that dry. You don't have to try to fill in um, um, all the color and get it saturated right away. You just need to get a coat on there and let that coat dry. So the next coat is actually going to stick to it much better. And you're going to get plenty of good coverage that way. And here you can see that uh, these little parts uh, stick nicely to the painter's tape. And once we get those painted up, We'll switch them over to uh, the reserve piece that we have set aside to hold these parts. That way we'll be able to paint the other side of them. Now that we've used uh, the black primer for uh, uh, priming all of our parts here, we are going to use that to our advantage. Uh, in a lot of reference photos, there's a lot of items uh, that are actually painted black inside the Huey. Now not all Hueys had black floors and consoles uh, but since there's such a plethora of that uh, we'll just go ahead and mask off 
these areas that we want to leave black. And so for me, we're going to leave this center console here and we'll also be leaving the floor uh, sections of it black as well. And as you can see in this photo, I also uh, taped up that instrument panel that's uh, on the roof above the uh, pilot and co-pilot. And so next up is to mix us up some paint. We're going to be using craft acrylic paints. Uh, the first one is the lightest one, the pale gray. And we'll be using that one. And then we have a dark one too, which is the regular gray, which is a... Uh, a medium tone gray. So I'm going to be using this pale gray for this uh, front structure uh, that is in our roof section. I just think that that's going to be a lot more visible than if we were to use the uh, that interior cockpit green <laughs> that you see a lot of them. And looking at a lot of reference photos, uh, and, and you never know if you're going to get it right or not, uh, especially with so many different variants of the of the Huey. Uh, I chose the gray to do this in. And I'm also going to use that same pale gray for the front nose structure here, uh, as well as the uh, extension pieces on the floor where the pilots rest their, their feet for their pedals. Uh, we're going to do that in the same light color. And there, like I say, is there's so many different uh color options uh, that you could choose. Uh, I just chose this one. I'm sure somebody's not going to like that color, but I think it's going to look good. So next up, we're going to use our gray. Now, I call this a medium gray, so in the gray scale from light to dark, it kind of sets right in the middle. So <laughs> to me, that's middle. That's medium gray uh, or just gray gray. Um, and what we're doing here is we are covering all of that uh, uh, sound insulation. Uh, I'm sure it's sound and fireproofing uh, inside the uh, for the headliner and also uh, it'll be around the engine area uh, in the cockpit. So we're just going to lay that down and get that coated up uh, with this uh, <laughs> medium gray. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure somebody's going to say no it's just called gray but uh, and, and you're probably right. But that's going to give us a basis for uh, for what we're going to do next. So <laughs> we just need to get that on. Now the next color we're going to use is going to be olive. And this is an acrylic craft paint. Uh, and we're going to be using that to paint all of our seats and also the center section here. Uh, or center or the actual panel of our instrument cluster here. Now I did mask this off of course because I, I want that uh, surrounding padding uh, around the uh, instrument panel to remain black. And we're also going to do our pilot and co-pilot seats. And then we're going to cover our troop seats as well. And we don't want to forget about our ammo storage bins. At least that's the way it looks uh, in my vision for uh, the color scheme in, in the interior. And, of course, we have our uh, vertical supports for our front troop seats. We need to get those painted green as well. Now I'm going to work on our gauges. So most military aircraft gauges are painted black. The, the faces of them are black. And so what I'm using is the, uh, the airbrush mixture uh, that we originally coated everything in when we did our first primer coat. And since it is thinned out for airbrush use, uh, it'll kind of run around the uh, uh, the rim of the uh, the gauge and give us a nice round appearance for our gauges. And when we're done, that's kind of what we end up with. Uh, might need a little bit of touch up here and there, but eh, it looks pretty good. All right, so. <laughs> what we're going to do here is we're going to try some dry brushing using acrylics. So this is the pale gray that we sprayed on those uh, structure elements. And I'm just using an angled flat brush here. And you do want to soak as much of that paint out as possible. So you're not, it's not going to get very far. 
but we don't want it to run down into the cracks of that darker gray and so we're just going to brush that on over and we'll we'll have to go back and uh, reload the brush and unload it before we dry brush uh, again but we'll just have to keep doing this uh, until we get the look that we want uh, you got to kind of move with it pretty quick though because these acrylics even though this is thinned out so much uh, it will dry on you fairly quick so this is the first time I've ever tried dry brushing with an acrylic so <laughs> we'll see what we come up with now you can see here we've done the exact same thing with our uh, roof section uh, but I've also came in with that exact same pale gray and painted that little dome light that's in the middle there now I'm coming in with the uh, olive green and this is still the same uh, mixture for airbrush that I'm using here, but we're just painting the we're painting these uh, rails that the uh, the doors slide back and forth on. So now we have the moment of truth here. We're going to remove uh, all of our mask here, and hopefully we're not pulling off any paint, and just see how everything turned out for us. And as you can see there, the grays. Uh, look really good good contrast against that black floor and uh, you can also see that I did uh, put masking tape up around where the engine goes kind of want that to remain black so I, I, I did that to protect it from overspray and now we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing now this is my favorite color uh, for dry brushing it's uh, flat steel it is a testers enamel paint and I think enamels work much better than uh, acrylics so the trick to dry brushing is to load your brush with some paint and then unload it on a paper towel and get as much of it off as you can uh, and, and start off extremely light. And you don't want to use a good brush for this because by the time you're done, it won't be a good brush anymore. So this is just a round brush that's well worn. Uh, I like to use this particular brush for my dry brushing. We're just lightly going over all of those raised areas and as you progress in dry brushing uh, you'll be able to press a little bit harder and harder until uh, it, you know that you're getting a good effect when you really got to work at it <laughs> to to actually get those details to show up and Revel did a really good job uh, when they molded this part because those little details can really pop as you can see right there so I think that looks pretty decent so we're going to use the exact same method here for our overhead console and uh, we will do that for uh, the center console between the seats as well and here you can see uh, how well that detail really shows up uh, the little flat steel there uh, really makes those details pop for us and we're just going to continue with that same theme uh, adding wire to uh, to the uh, deck plates here or floor plates uh, in our in our chopper and that's going to represent the wire from uh, uh, the pilot and the crew and soldiers um, of course <laughs> walking on these plates and rubbing the paint off of them now another moment of truth we get to remove this uh, mask uh, off of our uh, uh, instrument cluster here and see what we ended up with and I am pleasantly surprised it, it looks pretty good uh, however right here on the corners I probably need to dry brush those corners a little bit with some flat steel and then it'll be ready uh, for the cockpit now I'm going to use Model Masters Aluminum Acrylic and I'm going to be using that to paint up the pilot and co-pilot's uh, uh, rudder pedals I guess is what they are. Um, so I do need to put two coats on here because it's not covering very well for me uh, on this black but that's easily done and it dries fast so it's no big deal. So now I'm going to be using olive again. Uh, this time we're not going to thin it out. Uh, we're just going to use a little bit here in our paint palette 
And we're going to be using this to paint the center section of our collective and also uh, our uh, joysticks too. And <laughs> I'm really sorry about the uh, uh, aspect ratio. Uh, I tend to get that wrong in at least one video. Now I'm going to be using some Tamiya XF56 here, uh, metallic gray, and we're going to be using that to paint up our uh, feed trays. I almost want to call them ammo belts, but these these are actually uh, the fixtures that the uh, uh, the ammo belts are contained within. So they're you really you can't really see inside of them too well. To see the ammunition uh, and so they, they are not brass or uh, or copper colored uh, they would be a darker color also I want to use Tamiya's olive drab here that's XF 62 and we're going to use that to paint uh, the brackets that uh, uh, hold our ammunition uh, cans or bins down and uh, That'll give us a little bit different green contrast here. Kind of bring out those brackets a little bit so that uh, they're more easily seen. And that should look pretty good for us. And as you can see here, that's kind of the look we're going for. I, I think that looks pretty good. We can easily see those brackets. So now we need to simulate a little bit of wear on these. They, they would be a little bit beat up. So we're back to our testers flat steel enamel and our dry brushing technique. And we're going to use that to uh, catch the corners and the edges of these boxes and also the brackets. Uh, kind of give them a little bit of worn chipped look. We don't want to go overboard but we do kind of want to emphasize those edges. And I think that looks pretty decent. Yeah, it's ready to go inside. Okay. Now we need to look to our troop seats. Now, these get pretty worn. Uh, we're going to start off with our olive green here. And we'll just put a little bit of that into our paint palette. And now I'm going to add a little bit of this bright yellow here. And in case you didn't know, um, black and yellow makes olive drab and so if you have an olive color you can add yellow to it to make a lighter olive drab or, or olive color and uh, we're gonna mix this up really good and then we're gonna add a little bit of this airbrush thinner to kind of thin that out a little bit uh, we're gonna be using the acrylic paint dry brushing technique that we did in the gray earlier we're going to use that on our seats. So the technique is the same as uh, when we did our headliner insulation stuff. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to load the brush with our paint here. And then we're going to unload as much of it as we can. And we're going to have to work quick because this being water-based, it is going to dry really fast. So when we do our troop seats, uh, we when we made them we put these creases in them so now we're just going to have to go across uh, those creases that way we don't fill those creases up uh, we want those to kind of remain dark and that'll give us our contrast and hopefully it'll look good uh, we'll just have to see what we get here in the end so after we get done with our dry brushing here uh, you can see how We've kind of highlighted all the high areas here. And for comparison, we'll take a look at uh, the, the difference between the painted one and the unpainted one. Or I should say the dry brushed one and the not dry brushed one. And uh, I think it looks okay. I, I will say that I'm not a real fan of this um, acrylic dry brushing. <laughs> but with practice, we'll get better. Now we're going to go back to the pale gray and we're going to use this on our seat frames and a lot of the uh, video or not videos but the photographs that I've looked at um, most of these were a much lighter color um, some of them were a dark olive 
and a lot of them though were uh, what appears to be a light gray color so I'm gonna paint mine up uh, with the light pale gray here uh, I think that'll give us a good contrast and kind of help these stand out a little bit inside the crew area so here we're going back to our craft acrylic paints we're going to use our olive green and our bright yellow <clears throat> excuse me and we're going to mix that up into a lighter more or less od green so what i'm looking to do here is to distinguish the difference between the cushions themselves and then the seat frames as you know we sprayed earlier the uh, seat frames or the entire seat actually <laughs> uh, with the olive and so we want these uh, canvas style seats to be uh, of a little bit lighter contrast here and so we're going to paint the entire seat or cushions uh, let me get that right cushions in the lighter green and with that done, uh, we're going to go back to our green mixture here, and we're going to lighten it up some more with a little bit more bright yellow. And we'll just take and mix that up really good. So the effect we're going for here uh, is to show wear patterns on our seat cushions where the pilot and co-pilot's bodies are going to make contact with, uh, um, with, with the seats. And so we're going to use a kind of a dry brushing action here and maybe even a little bit of stippling action. Uh, we just want to uh, lighten up those areas uh, where the most wear is going to show up on our cushions. And as you can see, that's kind of the effect that we're getting here. I think it's, it might be passable. You guys let me know in the comment if you like that look or not. I'm still kind of up in the air with it. And of course, where would we be without our flat steel? There are metal parts on these seats and uh, we need to actually show a little bit of wear here and there. Uh, I'm just using a piece of cardstock here to uh, kind of protect those seat cushions. And on this seat support, this would be an area where the seat belts would get thrown over the side from time to time. So we're going to go ahead and highlight that a little bit. And then... Uh, that little box that's on the back of the seats, uh, emphasizing the edges there, and then where the seat belt shoulder straps would come across uh, the back of the seat. We'll take and hit that up too. So I think we need to make some, uh, some seat belts. So what I'm doing is I'm just cutting some mask tape here, uh, two millimeter two millimeter wide strips <laughs> there we go uh, we're going to use that to simulate our uh, our seat belts now you can buy seat belts uh, aftermarket but here we're just going to make them so i do need to get it into that little slot in the box that we had made which is the anchor point for it and I cut it off at the top of the seat, and then we're just going to make our two shoulder straps uh, that come down um, from that top point. And it being mass tape, it will it will stick to the seat, no problem. Well, once we get it exactly the way we want it, we just want it to look like uh, you know it's it's fallen down the the front of the seat there. Now, mass tape on top of mass tape doesn't stick very good, so we're going to use a little CA glue there to secure that, that end, or I should say three pieces of it there, just to make sure it doesn't come loose later on, because we are going to come back in and paint these. And then I have uh, cut an angle for our uh, seat belts that come up the side here. And we'll just trim them to length. No one particular length in, in particular. Uh, we're just kind of simulating the seat there. And we've added just a little uh, piece of aluminum there. Uh, kind of as a buckle. So now I'm going to use XF57 buff. And we're going to use that to paint uh, our seat belts. 
And of course, this being to me a paint, just make sure that you don't paint over it while it's still wet. If you need to come back in and touch up, wait till it dries. Otherwise, you'll just pull that to me a paint right off of them. So we're going to paint those up real good. Now that we've got everything painted up, uh, we can start assembling the interior of our Huey. Uh, what I'm going to use here is going to be the uh, medium strength CA glue. And the good thing about medium strength CA glue is that it gives you a little bit of time that if you get things uh, not quite <laughs> where you want them, uh, you can still pull it back off without tearing things apart and breaking them all up. And it's easy to make those little adjustments. And of course, the reason why we're using uh, medium strength CA glue is because we're gluing painted metal parts onto painted polystyrene parts. And uh, the Tamiya Extra Thin or any other model glue is really not going to hold these, these parts in place for us. Uh, they will come, come loose and we don't want that happening. We, we want everything to remain right where we put it. So I know CA glue can be a pain to use, but in this particular instance, this is, this is definitely uh, what we need to do. Now you're probably thinking, what about those pilot figures? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, we're, we're not going to use these pilot figures, not at all. Uh, they do not go together well. They do not fit together well. There's large gaps, and uh, oh, they're just horrible. But, the, you know, it's pretty much what you would expect uh, from a large figure from the 1960s and we're not going to use them that's why we went ahead and put our seat belts in and everything we're we're just going to leave these figures out and with that we're going to use this model master acryl flat clear and we're going to coat all of our work and seal everything in and then we're going to come back with just a little bit here of our uh, brown panel liner by tamiya and we're going to use it to emphasize a little bit of these little areas on our seat belts uh, for our adjustments and, and what have you there. And I'm going to attempt to add a little bit of life to the seat belts <laughs> with that panel liner. Also, we're going to kind of use it uh, to dirty up the, uh, the area here um, on this uh, front frame member. And here we're just kind of cleaning it up a little bit with the uh, 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 thinner, <clears throat> enamel thinner, uh, where it's kind of wicked out and around in areas that we don't want it. So now I thought it would be a good time for us to take a few snapshots uh, because uh, the next step is going to be uh, closing this up by installing our roof section. And before we do that, uh, I just thought we'd take a couple of shots here and let you see uh, what all we've accomplished so far for our Huey. Now, a lot of gunships didn't have troop seats, and yet there are still photographs of plenty of gunships that did have Trump, uh, troop seats. Um, so I decided to go ahead and add those details in. Um, kind of fill out that crew area a little bit. Uh, I think it makes a much more presentable model. And since I'm building it and it's mine, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, and it's Michael Virtuoso. It's, it's yours too, buddy. I'm building this one for you. Um, I thought that, uh, yeah, we should go ahead and add those details. And I hope that uh, you think that they look pretty good. Um, I find them rather interesting and uh I really enjoyed building them, so um, let's move on and uh, close this thing up. So we're going to go back to our CA glue here. Uh, since we're gluing painted surfaces onto painted surfaces more or less, uh, the medium CA glue does a really good job for us. Um, so we're going to go ahead and place that on to the mating surfaces there. And we have to kind of 
thread the needle there with our vertical supports for our seats and we'll just press that into place until it tacks up and then I'll come back in with a little bit of CA glue and we'll glue the top of those posts uh, into place. With everything glued up we can go ahead and trim these posts off. Uh, don't have to be flush but we do need to make them a lot shorter or it's not going to fit inside the airframe. Now I've went ahead and tucked our interior into uh, uh, the halves of our airframe here and you can kind of see uh, what it's going to look like um, once we get it finished. I just want to make sure everything fits real good. Remember, test fit, test fit, test fit. And so that's going to wrap up this video. I uh, really want to thank everyone for tuning in and watching. Special thanks to all my subscribers. And if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber, I hope that maybe I've earned your subscription. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that uh, you won't miss the next episode in, uh, in our Huey series build here. And uh, don't forget to press that like if you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate that. So until next time, guys, I will see you in the next one.